we want to say welcome to this. But I want you to go ahead and continue standing. I, I hear the Lord say there's some things that you've been praying for. He's going to bring it to pass this year. Before the year over, there's some things that you're wondering, how is it going to get done? But as you transition into the new year, I believe 2020 is going to be an incredible year for you because 2019 was a rough year. I mean, even with family, a lot of decisions, um, decisions that were made that you felt that it was not even God, that it's not God. But I hear the Lord says that all things are working together for your good. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, he's going to turn around for your good. I believe 2020 is going to be an incredible year for you. Not only a year with grace and mercy. I see you moving around. There's some job situations, some things that God is getting ready to do on your behalf. Get ready. He said his favor is upon you. He says he hears your prayer. You're not a person that prays out loud. When you pray, you pray from the heart. A lot of times people like for God to hear them with their mouth speaking and they want to let other people hear them. But it's nothing like saying something to the Lord and knowing that he hears you because it's coming from your heart. I believe God is going to do something supernatural on your behalf this year. Just watch. I see favor. I see families getting favor. I see things that are happening. God's grace is upon you. I believe this year is going to be an incredible year coming up to 2020. But I believe this year you're going to finish it strong. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. I'm still getting the feedback right there. Hallelujah. How many are you excited about... 2020 and what God has for you. How many of you was a rough year 2019? How many I may say it was a rough year? Let me tell you. 2019 was a year that I don't know about you, I'm ready for it to go. <laughs> Too bad I can't send it away today. I would send it away today. But I'm so happy that God allows us to see the end of the year. Oh, December. How many of you know? Exciting. You know. I know with December and you know, Black Friday, I was talking to a friend of mine. I said, you know something? Everybody's all excited about Black Friday. I say Black Friday for me every Friday. <laughs> and you didn't catch that, right? <laughs> Black Friday every Friday for me. And, and so much of the country is in turmoil because of the fact that uh, they're so concerned about what they're going to get, what they're going to give. How many know those people that like that? When Christmas comes, when it's around the holiday, that's when there's in the world, you know, people have been saying even in the news all over, this is the time where people are most, mostly depressed than any other time of the year. This is the time where there is more suicidal events that are happening in our country, where people don't know what to do about this. How many know if God provided for you yesterday, he'll provide for you today and tomorrow? How many believe that? It's where our trust is. He says he'll keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him and whose trust. And the problem is it's not God, it's us. Where's your trust? I hear the Lord saying, where's your trust this morning? Who are you trusting in? Are you trusting in your job? I remember in the beginning of the year, uh, Lord gave me a word that says, there's some people in this church. Uh, it wasn't a doom and gloom message. I know some people say, well, how are you going to pro prophesy that? But the Lord says, there's some people in this church, before they're in the end of the year, they're not going to be in the same job that they have. Might be they might lose their job. We don't know what the reason is. But I know something. God says all things, not some things. He says, all things work together. See, a lot of times we wait till things begin to happen. When something happened to us, we're like, oh, don't worry about it. God's going to turn around for my good. No. How about if you begin to confess it ahead of time, begin to declare, no matter what the enemy tries to do, no matter what's going on in my life, God is going to cause all things to work for what? For my, I can't hear you. For what? I believe you're asleep this morning. For our good. Oh, yeah. The enemy attacks you, God's going to turn around on your behalf. Your job get rid, rid of you, God's going to turn around for your good. Your husband leave you, God got a better looking one. Don't look at the person right next to you. Your wife leave you, get ready, sexy's on the way. <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But God's plans are good. And the thing about God, he says, I know the end from the beginning. Whatever you go through, it might catch you by surprise. How many know that doesn't catch God by surprise? How many believe that? Amen. Hallelujah. We're excited this morning. I know the house is kind of skimpy. Uh, a few people disappeared. A few people are not here this morning, but I'm glad that you are here this morning. That means that the ones that are supposed to be here, you're here this morning. And God has a plan, and he has a purpose this morning for us. Come on, let's bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for your incredible grace. We thank you for your incredible mercy. We thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that's here. Father, you said wherever two or three gather here and you are in our midst. And not only that, that you will never leave us, nor what? 
forsake us, Father God. And we thank you that you have not left us and you have not forsaken us, Father God, that you are here with us this morning, Father. Have your way. Father God, I ask that you would speak through me. Speak to me, Father God. Use me for your glory, Father God. Not for me to get any glory, but we know that all the glory goes to you. Father God, let our vessels be good ground, Father God. Let your word will not return void. And Father, we decree, Father God, it will accomplish everything that you wanted to accomplish in every one of our lives, Father God. We bind the spirit of apathy. Uh, we bind the spirit of sleepiness in this house, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, have your way. We pray, Father God, that we will be awakened to righteousness. We'll be awakened to your purpose. We'll be awakened to your plans, Father God. And Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, <laughs> I was preparing this morning, and all through the week had been a pretty busy week. You know, last week, we had an exciting time in the house when we began to talk about uh, praising, giving God thanks for all things. And, and this morning, a uh, message that I've touched on when we were in the other building is called Peace That Passes All Understanding. We're in a time and a season where there's so much turmoil in the world. Not only turmoil in the world, there shouldn't be any turmoil in the house of God either. But unfortunately... There are people that are here this morning. I'm not talking about the people that are not here. You're wondering what you're going to do for Christmas. What you're going to buy the kids. Some of you are wondering what you're going to get for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Because you know it's around the holiday and the enemy have you unease because most of us are wondering what's going to happen. And some of you, we're not even into 2020. You're already worried about 2020. The Bible says, don't worry about what? Anything. Don't worry about tomorrow. That means that if he took care of you yesterday, the same God that blessed you with a job can bless you with a new job. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. The same God that blesses you with a house can bless you with a new house. The same God that blessed you with a car yesterday can bless you with a new car today. Nothing is impossible for him. The peace that God gives you and I the world don't understand it, and they can't have that peace. How many of you have pe seen people that are going through stuff, and they have such a peace in their life? Yeah. And there's other people, as soon as they have a problem, as soon as they walk in the door, you already know they have a problem. You ever had people call you on the phone? As soon as they say hello, you're ready to say, what's the matter? <laughs> what's going on? They don't even have to tell you what's going on, but already you sense in your spirit by their hello or good morning, there's something that's going on with them. There is no peace. And even there's people that we know, as soon as they come around, we can tell where they're agitated. There's something going on in their life. There's no peace. There's nothing but doom and gloom in their life. Like you know that, gosh, there's something going on with her life. There's go something going on with his life. But one thing God says that the peace that he gives us, no man can give us that what? Not only that, no man should be able to take that peace away from you also as well. Open up your Bible with me for Philippians 4, 9. Philippians 4, verse 4. When you have it, say amen. We're talking about peace that passes what? Philippians 4, <clears throat> we'll start at um, verse 4, I believe it is, Philippians 4, verse 4 to 9. You know, it's amazing when you read this scripture, <laughs> have you, anybody know anybody that can use some joy in their life? <laughs> Everything about them is sour, nothing you do can make them happy. I can honestly tell you, as a pastor, I got folks in here, nothing I say can make them happy. I'm going to leave that alone. Don't look at the person right next to you. If you're not preaching what they want you to preach, they have no joy. See, uh, people are so used to going to churches where they get ministered to the flesh. The Bible says the flesh profits nothing. Mm -hmm. But your spirit, because there's so many times, 
How many of you have been seeing people that go to church for 20 years, 30 years, they hear the word in and out, and there's no change? But they're going to sing about change. I always say change is not change until you change. I don't care how much you sing about change. Because God is looking for fruit. Oh, yeah. He's looking for fruit. Is there something in you that he can eat from? But I believe this morning he's going to give you the fruit of knowing that you can have a peace that even though you may go through the storm, even in the midst of the storm, God is with you and you can understand that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He says, rejoice in the Lord, what? And amazing, God will say, again, I will say, rejoice. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, have some joys. <laughs> rejoice. Come on. I mean, put a smile on your face this morning. Come on, folks. He says, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say what? He says, let your gentleness be known to what? He says, because the Lord is what? At hand. Boy, there's some folks that I can honestly tell you, they're, they're, they're not gentle with the way they handle each other. The folks that we should be nicer to are the folks in the church, and it seems that we're meaner to them than we're meaner than people on the job, although you're not supposed to be mean again at all, period. He said, be gentle. You know what he says? Let your gentleness be what? To who? To the church folks? Because the Lord is at hand. Okay, what's the next one? He says, be what? Be concerned, be anxious for nothing at all. Especially during this holiday, we have some folks that are anxious about what Santa Claus is going to bring for them. And sometimes it's not even them. It's the kids that get them anxious. Mom, I want this. Dad, I want this. Knowing, doggone, well, you can't afford it, but you're going to try to buy it. Mm -hmm. They show you that expensive phone, that expensive gift, but because you want to tell them how much you love them. Let me tell you, gifts doesn't mean that you love them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by what? And supplications, making our request known to him. That means that no matter what you're going through, you should not be anxious, especially about this holiday. God says, why don't you bring it to me in prayer? Why don't you find out what is my will for you? Let my kingdom come in your life. Let my will be done in your life as it is in heaven. Because the world system means that do whatever you have to do so you can have it. Do whatever you have to do so you can have a good Christmas. I'll tell you what, if you go around and ask the people in the world, what do you think Christmas is going to be like? Well, I want a good Christmas. I just don't know if I have enough money. I guarantee you, if I ask some people in here, first thing they're going to say is that, Ooh, Lord, you know where I'm going to get that money to buy that gift from. So you think Christmas is about gifts? Christmas is about Jesus. He's given us the best gift, and that best gift is his son, Jesus Christ. He says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. And he says, with what? Boy, with some ungrateful folks. My name is Jimmy. Lord, give me, give me, give me. Lord, I want this for Christmas. Lord, the kids got to have this. Lord, the kids got to have that. You're not even thanking them for what he gave the kids last year. You're not even thanking them for the fact that he woke you up this morning. But you're going to let the kids drive you crazy. Grandma, I got to have this. Grandpa, I got to have this. Mama, I got to have this. How about if you have a job? <laughs> let me be nice. He says, with thanksgiving, he says, let your request be made known to God. With supplications and prayer. When we talk about a peace that passes understanding, that means that the world will try to send turmoil. Things into your life that would cause you not to walk in the peace that God has given you. But God says, he is with you. He will never leave you. Know what? You know, the amazing thing about the world is that the world have a different talk. The kind of talk that the world have, you and I should not be speaking as the world speaks. 
They speak a gloom, <laughs> a doom talk. They have a gloom and doom syndrome. They use these phrases, um, clitches that destroy them. Matter of fact, the world gets to a point where they have no peace, where when you talk to them first thing they say, oh, be careful. Be, be careful out there. Take care. You ever hear the world say that? Mm hmm. Then what it says? Oh, they say, I'm afraid so. I mean, people say, I'm afraid so. What are you afraid of? Mm hmm. Anybody ever hear the world people tell you that? I'm afraid so. What are you afraid of? And most of us, we come into the church not learning how to talk, Lord. I mean, what are you afraid of? Yeah. You know, God says, fear not. And then what his word says, fear not. For I am with you. Because if you know that he is with you, you should have a peace that he's going to take care of the things that he says that he's going to take care of in your life. Now here's another one. I always tell people, if I hear somebody say that, when I get in a car with them, I'm not going anywhere with them. I'm dying to get there. Whoo, that food is to die for. <laughs> Life them, that's in the power of the tongue. <laughs> I'm dying to get there. <laughs> I can't wait to get there. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. I'm dead sure. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm dead sure. The Bible says that you and I will give an account for every what? Idle word that you speak. I mean, a lot of us, we look at the world, the way the world speaks, and we think that we're not going to give an account. Let me tell you, there was a lady when I lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma. She used to drive by this tree, and she would tell her husband, look at the way that tree is hanging down. I bet you that tree is going to fall down one day. Every time they would drop, boy, that tree's going to fall down one day. And the husband say, yeah, here it is. Every time we pass by here, would you believe it? One day she was passing by, that, that tree fell, and when it fell, they fell right on the car, on them. I mean, nothing happened to them, but it fell right on them. Every time she would get by that tree, she would call it in. And not understanding, the Bible says, life and death is in the power of you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So that means that we can't break God's principles and speak a life of doom and gloom saying that I'm dying to get there. I'm dead sure. And not understand that the words that you speak, the Bible says that you would eat the fruit of your words. Anybody understand? Yeah, the tree fell on her because she brought that on her. Here's another one that we like to use. I'm scared to death. <laughs> oh, she scared me to death. <laughs> anybody, anybody ever used that word before? I'm scared to death. Yeah. What are you scared about? What are you scared to death about? How about if you and I talk like God talks? A word talk. Because we have to learn how to line up our mouth with what God's word says. God says you are blessed going in. You're blessed going out. You're the head and not the tail. Why are you scared to death? You're more than a conqueror. He always causes you to what? To triumph. Why not speak what God's word says? Instead of looking at your bank account and say, ooh, every time I get paid, never enough. Next thing you know, my account goes to $36 negative. Next month, your account is what? $36 negative. Because you've been calling it. How about if you say, Lord, I just thank you. There's so much money coming into my account. I don't know where it's coming in, but it's coming from, but it's coming in. How many of you like to speak that? Instead of declaring I never have enough, and you start declaring I have more than enough. Amen? Word talk is when you be, and I begin to speak what God's word says about us. Because a lot of times we let people take our peace from us because of what they say about us instead of understanding what God says about us. Because if you've been set free, the Bible says, who the Son has set free is what? Free indeed. Go to Mark eleven twenty two with me. Mark 11. When you have it, say amen. We're talking about peace that passes all understanding. Mark 11, starting at, let's start at verse 22. Um, just to kind of give you 
just a background. This is the back of Lewis Pinsky. And before that, I guess I have it. It says that whatever he said, what does it say? It will be done. Therefore, 24 says, I say whatever things you ask, when you what? Believe you receive it, and you will what? And you have it. He didn't say wait till you get it to know that you have it. He says whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe you what? Just see, there's a difference. You know, I'm going to use Brother Lamont for example. Brother Lamont says, my pastor, you know, after church, you know, uh, I need for you to give me $50. And I said, Brother Lamont, don't worry, I'm going to give it to you. He's going to tell me, well, I, you know, thank you for it ahead of time before he gets it. Because he knows that I'm going to give him. Unfortunately, we believe each other's words more than we believe God's words. Yeah. He's going to say thank you. He's not going to wait until I give it to him. But most of us, when we ask God for something, we wait to see if we get it first before we say thank you. Don't look at the person right next to you because it's true. How many of us every day we get up, we pray about certain things. Then turn around the next morning, we pray for the same thing. Why are you going to pray for it again? I don't know who I'm talking to. Because if you truly believe that he's given it to you, what you should be saying, Lord, when you wake up in the morning, I don't see the, the bill money. I don't see the light money, but I'm going to thank you. I don't know how I'm going to pay the mortgage, but I know the money is here because I've already prayed about it. Thank you. I don't know where the food is going to come from, but I'm going to say, oh, come on, I can't hear you. Come on, wake up, folks. See, because you don't see it, now you don't have no peace. Oh, yeah. See, the word of God should be able to give us peace because we know that whatever he says he's going to do, he's going to back it up. He says not one of his word, not one of his promises has ever failed, but yet people are going to promise you stuff and you send them a text message, they don't even see it. Especially the folks that have, you know, iPhone, you know, some people have iPhone, you text them and they act like they didn't read the message, but they see the message, but they don't want to click that they got the message. Don't look at the person right next to you with the iPhone. Because you know when they get there, oh, yeah, he got the message. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Acting like trying to ignore my call. Yeah. You know, folks will say, I'm going to give that 20. I'm going to give that 50. Next thing you know, you call them. They don't pick, I'm sorry, did you call me? <laughs> They're hiding from you. But one thing about God, his promises, he's not going to hide from you. He's not going to run for you. Whatever he promises you, he's going to do whatever his word says he's going to do. Even when people say they're not going to do what they say, that's why I trust has to be on him, not on people. God will use people, but you got to understand that ultimately every good gift comes from him, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. What happens is that we put our trust more on men, and then when they fail us, we're saying, God, I guess it was not your will. So where's your trust? Where's that peace is going to come from? Peace comes from knowing that God will do whatever he says that he will do. I'll tell you what, I don't care if it takes a year, two years, three years, ten years. Let me tell you, he says, hold fast to the confession of your faith without wavering because he who promised is what? Faithful. Even when you and I are not faithful, he's still faithful. I don't know, I know there's people here this morning, you're thinking God's not going to bless you because of what you did last night. Or what you did this week. But you know something? He woke you up this morning, so why wouldn't he bless you? Oh, wow. He blessed you with his son, Jesus Christ. That is more valuable than anything that you can ask him for. More precious than anything. Jesus paid the price with his blood. You mean he can't give you that house? He can't give you that car? He can't give you that family? He'll give you whatever you ask for because he's already given you his best. Everything else is less than his best cannot compare by any means at all. So that means that the peace that he's actually going to have is to have a peace and have a trust. He said that if your mind stays on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Amen? Amen. Therefore, he said, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive it, and you will what? That you have it. So why pray for it if you don't believe you're going to get it? You ever seen times you want to ask somebody for something? Let's use money, for example. You know they're not going to give it to you, but you still go and ask. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. You still ask. Anybody ever ask your relatives to loan you some money or give you something? Or friends and, and you know they're not gonna give you, but you say, well, I'm gonna check them out anyway. Maybe I might get it that way. But one thing about God, you don't have to try him. Let me tell you something. If you ask him and you believe him, he's gonna give it to you. 
You don't have to worry about where it's coming from. He's going to bless you regardless of what. He says, whatever things you ask for, believe you receive it, and you will what? And you will have it. Let's take a look at a few scriptures on peace real quick. Look at uh, 1 Peter 5, 7. Peace that passes all understanding. First Peter 5, 7, if you want to look up, if you haven't found it, says, casting all your what? Yeah. You know, matter of fact, I want to put on there, casting all your worries. Yeah. Remember what was that guy, was it Bobby McFerrin? and says, don't worry, be happy. Remember that song? Well, I wish we could sing that every Sunday here. Da, 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 da. Remember that song? <laughs> don't worry. Be happy. Well, we need to sing that for some folks. When they walk in the door, ushers, and they come in the door, you say, don't worry, be happy. Because <laughs> you can tell folks when they walk in the door, they got something going on, and they worry about everything. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, casting all your cares about on him, what? For he what? You mean to say, God, you know, how many of us care for our children? He says, if you and I that are evil can give good gifts to our kids. Let me tell you, I know some people, they got some bad kids, boy. And they got the latest phones. <laughs> yeah. You tell the kids, sit down. Hmm. This must be the opposite. You tell them, behave, they act up even more. But yet they get blessed. He says, if you that are evil can give your children good gift, what about God that's a good God? You think he's going to hold anything from you and I? And he didn't even withheld his only son, his best? You mean to tell me the things that you and I are praying for, he would not give us and he's already given us his best? He says, for he what? Cares for you. God cares for us. That means that you have to have a peace and understand, you know something? I'm going to keep my mind in peace. I'm not going to worry about this because I know God's going to take care of me. He's always taking care of me. Mm -hmm. He's always taking care of the situation. Let's look at another scripture. Go to Isaiah 26.3. Here's the scripture. It says, you will keep him in what? Him or her in perfect peace whose mind is what? So this morning, where's your mind at? It should be said, we probably have more than half the people in here. You know, Sister Felicia had to get everybody to get involved in worship. When we come into the house of the Lord, we come to worship the Lord. Amen. Well, I come to the house of the Lord and not going to worship. Amen. If your mind's going to be on the ox tail, the curry goat. Oh, yeah. Because we come to church, our mind is somewhere else. You know, like that song, your mind, your body's here with me, but your mind on the other side of town? Come on. <laughs> we come here to worship the Lord, but our mind is definitely not here. God wants our mind to be here. And he knows when you're worshiping him and you're thinking about it, whoo, when church is over, I hope Pastor hurry up and get out of here so we can go ahead and get this chicken under. <laughs> oh, yeah, get this curd chicken happening. I need to run to the store. I, I, you know, and some of us, it's not even Monday. You already think about work on Monday. Don't look at the person right next to you. I know there's a few people in here thinking about Monday already. Ooh, I can't believe tomorrow's Monday. I don't want to go to that job. We just had a nice Thanksgiving. And as you're in church, it's going to be worse than you still thinking about, ooh, I don't want that leftover turkey. It's a little dry. <laughs> Is any more Brooklyn? Is there any grandparents? <laughs> Honey, I ain't talking about your turkey. <laughs> Let me come over here. I want some oxtail. <laughs> He, he says, if your mind stayed on him. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm in trouble. Pastor Greg, you got extra room at the house? <laughs> Gonna take a little house guest for a week. <laughs> he says, you know, he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is what? Stay on, on him. Because your trust is not on what's going on in your life right now. Your trust is not in a situation that you and I are going through. 
Our trust is what? Is in God. I, I tell you what, I'd rather trust nobody and trust God. You ever had people that know people that they said that I have trust issues? Okay, good. You don't trust people, but how about if you trust the Lord? Because if you trust God, he's not going to fail you. He's going to always lead you, and he's going to always what? He's going to always guide you. Let's take a look at another scripture. Again, we went through the scripture, but let's go ahead and hit it one more time. Philippians 4, 4, 9. Again, when you have trust in the Lord, when you trust in God for everything that you need, and you believe in God for certain things in your life, you ought to be rejoicing. You ought to be like walking around and say, hey, look, you know, I'm all right. You know, we should be at a point in our life where when you trust in God for something, you can't wait to see which way he's going to come through. Anybody ever been to you like, man, I don't know, Lord, how you're going to do this, but I'm excited. I'm looking to see how you're going to bless me because I know today you're going to bless me. Not to mention he said in his word, he daily loads us with benefits. How many of you know that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because most of us, when we start new jobs, first thing what we start looking for, what? The benefits. Yeah, we want to know how much we're going to get paid. That's number one. Number two, what kind of benefits is their insurance? Only one person I knew that got a job that didn't ask how much they're going to get paid was Makai. He just got a job at Publix. How much are they going to pay you? I don't know. <laughs> Do you have insurance? I don't know. I'm like, that's the first time of your first job. We were like, man, we forgot to coach him. Oh, first thing I'm going to know, what, you know, I go to organization. I want to hear all this noise. I want to know how much money you're going to pay me. That's going to determine whether I come back tomorrow. See, but he says in his word, he daily loads us with benefits. That means God and his kingdom, because a lot of times what we do as children of God, we have to learn not to operate in the world system. We need to operate outside of the system. We need to operate within the kingdom, because in the kingdom of God, there's no lack. Oh, yeah. There's no lack. There's peace and the Holy Ghost. There's peace in the kingdom of God. You can trust God that he will do whatever he says he would do because he says not, there's over 7,000 promises in his word. Oh, yeah. But most of us, instead of us being promise seekers, we're word seekers. We're worried about this. We're worried about the children. We're worried about the grandchildren. We're worried about the light bill. We're worried about the car. We're worried about the mortgage. We're worried about, I mean, when are you going to stop worrying? When he says, be anxious, don't worry about anything. He says that if he can give the grass food, let me tell you something. I know some folks that got cats and dogs that are so blessed. I guarantee you they're not worried about anything. They got insurance. They go to the vet. Isn't that amazing? And some of their owners, when they die, they leave them a lot of money. Jesus died and went to heaven and left us benefits, and most of us don't even know we have benefits. Yeah. What he, what he said in his word, he says, my people perish for what? For no revelation, lack of knowledge. How it is you're going to worship a God that you don't take time to know anything about? Yeah. Because most of us, we hear about God, or we're heard about God, but we don't know anything about God. It's like secondhand smokers. Yeah, there's people in the church, I call them secondhand Christians. Yeah. Because they don't open up the Bible, except for on Sundays. They don't pray until they need something. As long as things are going good, when it starts going bad, they call the church to pray for them. They want to know everything about God from the preacher, but they're not going to open up the Bible for themselves to understand anything about God. Mm -mm. Because there is benefits in God's kingdom. I know it's quiet in here. I want to hear it. Let's take a look at some of the men in the world who had peace in the midst of turmoil. Number one, let's take a look at David's life. Go to Psalms 91 real quick. We're going to get ready to wrap it up. Psalms 91. A very familiar scripture that most of us, or some of us, that's the only scripture you know. <laughs> Let's look at Psalms 
Verse 1 starts off, he who dwells in the secret place of what? Will abide under what? You know, number two says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is what? And he says, my God in him, I will what? Here's that word again, I will what? Trust. If he's your God, what are you going to do? You're going to trust him. Is he truly your God? Mm -hmm. How are you going to get in the car and say, whoo, Lord, traffic is bad during the holiday. I hope nobody doesn't hit me. But yet, you have to understand that angels are in camp around you. What, I mean, the angels are going to do their job, but you're going to do yours? Come on. You have to understand that we have authority to command angels. He says, a thousand, what? May fall at your right-hand side, at your side, but in 10,000 at your right hand, but it will show not what? It will not come near you. Mm -hmm. And when David wrote that Psalms, he had a whole lot going on. But he had his trust in God because he says that I don't care if anything's coming at me. It won't even come near me. Huh? It won't come near my dwelling place. Mm -hmm. Because I am abiding in the presence of God. Because let me tell you something. If you know that God would never leave you nor forsake you. And a lot of us, we only feel like we sense the presence of God only when you're in church. Yeah, there's folks. They feel like as soon as they walk out the door, the presence of God is gone. I often hear, oh, Sister Lulu caught the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not running. You can't catch him. Mm -hmm. I feel the Spirit of the Lord. You know, somebody start going like this in the church. Everybody says, oh, the Spirit was moving today because they were doing their shoulder like that. Mm -mm. Let me tell you something. The presence of God is here with you. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake. You know, I believe the presence of God will be with you until he, you get to heaven or before you get to that door. Whether he's going to say, well done for faithful, or he's going to say, depart from me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you something. There's many of us, and we know it. If the angels of God was not with us, you wouldn't be here this morning. Amen. The presence of God. So we have to understand that, you know, God's word says that a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 right hand, but it will not come what? You can trust God. You can trust his word. You can trust him for protection. You can trust him for healing. You can trust him for every need. So why not have peace in your life? Yes, I know the traffic going down to Miami and Fort Lauderdale is bad. But how many know that Jesus is riding with you? Amen. Yeah. Let's look at someone's life, someone else's life. Let's look at Psalms, I'm sorry, Genesis 7 5, real quick. Genesis 7 5. You know, one thing about Noah, you know, could you imagine God gave you, give you instruction, tell you to pack your bag? It's going to be a flood. Situation is going to be happening in Port St. Lucie. You're going to be looking at everybody else. Oh, I ain't going nowhere. See, one thing about God when he commands you to do something, you have to trust that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. Yeah, you have to trust. You know, I remember when we were moving uh, down here, you know, my wife says, so where are we going to move at? I said, I don't know. But we were believing God to move, and we were looking, we couldn't find a house. We'd drive down here to see if we can find a house. We'll come down. We couldn't find anything at all. But you know what my wife started to do? She started to pack. Because God told us that we were moving. And when he said, you are moving, you don't wait till you find a house. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Oh, yeah. If he says he's going to bless your car, you need to start going to the dealership. If he says he's going to bless you with the house, you need to start looking for that house. What are you going to do? He's going to look for the house for you? Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. Let me talk, let me talk to some folks around here. Oh, yeah. If he says he's going to bless you for a husband, you better start looking for that man. <laughs> let me be nice. Matter of fact, you should be looking for a man to find a wife, find a good thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, should I say, if he says he's going to bless you with a husband, you need to prepare yourself. You know, calm your hair, get your nails done. <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to. 
I'll be coming here looking like Pookie and them, you know. <laughs> get them nails done, get rid of those crusty nails, you know. <laughs> now that man is coming. <laughs> you know, the point I'm getting to, the Bible says, Genesis chapter 5, says, and Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. Because you have to understand that when God tells you to do something, you don't wait for him to do something else. You position yourself. As I was saying before, we didn't wait you know, to say, oh, man, Lord, okay, we need money to get a rented truck. We need a house. We don't know where the house can. No, we started packing everything. Before we know it, let me tell you, everything was packed except for bed. Because we knew that we were positioning ourselves. I don't know who I'm talking to. Position yourself to be able to move when the Lord says move. You know, if he says you're about to move, you're about to go to a next level, you're about to go to the next dimension, we have to be preparing ourselves. See, a lot of times when he tells us, you have to understand, even a plane, anybody ever been on a plane before? You ever see a plane whenever it's going to a new altitude, what happens? It begins to shake. I believe there's people that God's going to take you to a new level in 2020. The enemy's going to come after you like crazy. But I have to tell you, you already have the victory. Amen? Amen. You're more than a conqueror. No matter what he sends at you, you got to know, no matter what the attack is, you have to know, no matter what comes, I don't care if I have money or no money, family or no family, friends or no family, I'm going to go with the Lord. The Bible says Noah had trust in God, and he did according to all what the Lord has what? Commanded him. Because his trust, he understand that he had to stand on God's word in the midst of what? Turmoil. Yeah. He could have said, no, flood is coming, something is coming. Who's coming? It doesn't matter. I'm going to purpose myself to move forward for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and do whatever he tells me to do. Let's take a look at um, two other scriptures and we're done. Let's look at um, Daniel 6, 16. <clears throat> Most of you know the story about, you know, Daniel <clears throat> and the lion's den. The Bible says, so the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into what? The den of the what? The lions. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm assuming he must have been scared. <clears throat> I'll tell you, the other day I was in the room, and my wife was screaming, right, what's going on? She thought, there's a lizard in the house. <laughs> I mean, I had a lizard coming through, I mean, trying to get us out of the, trying to get her out of the house. It's bad when a lizard comes into your house and trying to put you out. You are supposed to be having authority over a lizard. There's a lizard in the house, and she's running all over the place. And somebody's a big lizard. <laughs> she, come on, trying to get a little lizard to run you out your house. <laughs> I come here. Come on, let me get some drug season on you. <laughs> Cook you up <laughs> anyway. But could you imagine? Daniel was cast in a lion's den, and and you know the king spoke to Daniel saying. Your God, whom you serve, continue. He what? He will deliver you. So imagine the king already knew that God would do it. See, a lot of times when the enemy tries to get us in a position where you don't have enough, you don't think that you have more than enough, you don't think that your marriage is going well, you don't think the kids are acting out, you don't think anything else is going in your right, you have to understand God will deliver you. That's his promise. He will deliver you. He will be there for you no matter what's going on. Let me tell you, even when the enemy wants to devour you, want to do anything to you, you have to understand that God is with you in the midst of everything that you and I are going through. Because he said, you have to trust God's words. He will never leave you. No, he will what? Forsake you. Forsake you. Here it is. The king says, he will what? Deliver you. You know what he says? Go to the next scripture. Next verse. What he says in verse 17. Do we have it up here? And then a storm was brought and laid on what? See, you got to understand that I don't know who God is speaking to this morning. I hear the word I hear the Lord saying, I am working on your behalf. I mean, anybody's going to receive that? I am working on your behalf. God is working behind the scenes. You know, a lot of times you may think that God is not moving. Some of us, we think God is slow. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we act like God is, I mean, we treat God like it's the Lord. You're real slow with this. You know how long I prayed about this? I don't see nothing. 
Let me tell you, faith is seeing things when you don't even see it. Faith is believing the impossible. God says the things that are impossible with men are possible with him. The things that are impossible with you and I, the things that we cannot afford, the things that we cannot do, we feel like, you know something, there's no way we can do those things. But God is saying, I can do them. If you trust me, you allow me to do it through you. You allow me to do it. For you. Put, see, where's your trust? Because the peace that God's give you, the world will not even understand that. Your family and your relatives will not even understand that because that peace is not coming from man. It's coming from God. When God says, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to take care of that situation, you have to say, Lord, let it be unto me according to your what? Your word. Because Mary herself, when she was about to give birth, the angel showed up. Most of you, if an angel walked up in here, you ought to be running out the door. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And when the angel said, Mary, by this time, Mary could have said, man, you better get out of my face. I don't even know a man. You know, when, see, most of us, when God says he's going to bless you, child, Lord, you haven't seen my credit scores yet? <laughs> it dropped last week. You want me to buy what? <laughs> Jesus, you ain't been looking at my scores, have you? <laughs> you know, you ain't seen what my paycheck looked like? They were short last week. <laughs> I heard about my guy that got his paycheck, and they shortened him a couple of hours, and he run in the public. So I got to go to the public to see where the rest of my money at. Because <laughs> I know I work more hours than this. See, when God promises you something, you wait until it happens because it's going to happen. Because there's a time that you and I, we have to go from petition, petition asking God for something, and leaving that petition and going to praise. High praise. Lord, I just thank you. What you said that you would do, you're going to do it, and I'm going to stand in your word. Lord, thank you for blessing me. Thank you for blessing my family. Thank you for blessing my children. Thank you for blessing me on the job. You walk in the job and start saying, boy, those folks, they get on my nerve. How about if you walk in there and say, I'm the head and not the tail? Thank you, Lord, that you said that you will surround the righteous with favor. And that what God's word says. But what do we do when we get on the job? We complain about the people who are in the job. We complain about the boss. Remember, you cried for that job. Lord, if you just let me have this job, I'll be at church every Sunday. You know you're lying. <laughs> Lord, if you bless me with this job, I'll tie it. And you sure ain't tied yet. But yet, you'll go into the job and complain and say, Lord, I just thank you. I'm the head and not the tail. Thank you that you said that you will surround the righteous with favor like a shield. I am your righteous. As soon as I walk in the door of this job, I have your favor with the boss because your favor is on me. No matter where Joseph went, he still had favor. Wherever you go, you have to understand you're still going to have God's favor on you because he said that he will surround you with favor. That means that if you go this way, you have favor. If you go this way, you have favor. If you go this way, guess what? You still have the favor of God on you. Because he says that his favor is on you. So you have to lift up your head and say, Lord, I don't care what's going on. Let me tell you something. I have your favor. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to have the peace to understand that you're going to make it happen. You're going to do it because your word changed now. Come on, let's stand to your feet with me. Come on, stand to your feet with me. Hallelujah. How many of you understand that God wants you to have peace that passes all what? All understanding in his word because he'll give you the peace. A peace that no man can what? Give you. Because many of us, we're looking for peace in everywhere else except through the blood of Jesus. Peace in everyone else except for in God. We're looking for peace in the church. Woo, if I go to church, I have a little peace. Let me tell you, when you get out the door, that's when hell is going to break through. Mm -hmm. But you have authority. You have dominion over what's going on in this world. You have authority and dominion on your job. You have authority in your home. You have authority in your family to begin to declare, to walk in the house and say, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but I thank you for your peace. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I know that you hold my future. I know that my trust is in you. You are my way maker. You are my provider. You are my healer. How many believe that? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. How many know that God is a way maker today? He'll give you peace that no man can give you. A peace that the world cannot even give you. And you believe that? God is a God that's more than enough. He's not going to just give you enough. 
He's going to give you more than enough. I know some of us, when we ask God for something, Lord, just, just give me enough so I can eat for me and my kids and dogs. No, God won't give you. He wants to establish his covenant. He wants to give you more than what you, because he says he will do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you can think or ask. Hallelujah. As you begin to prepare your heart, before we do altar call, I want you to prepare yourself, you know, for, for communion. Hallelujah. Come on and clap, come on and clap your hands.